بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متع الغرور The world is so deceiving, so conniving that it will con a person. A person will not even know the in they con. Sometimes for dunya people con other people as well. They have schemes, plans, plotting to rob other people. We know of one person and this is a true story and I know the person personally. He had invested some funds with somebody. After time, there was no returns. He came to know of this person because of his business partner. But after inquiring later on when everything went sour, his own friend, business partner said, you know, that person owed me money. I was hopeful he will make money out of your deal and then he'll pay me. So that was the first con. Somebody you know, somebody you trust, they should have informed you, but they didn't. Anyway, when this person insisted, then one night this person came with the products and the invoices and apparently on route, he was hijacked. On route, he was hijacked. Couldn't get hold of him. Eventually, some family member phoned and said he was hijacked, he was on route to you, and this is what happened. So this person suspected foul play, and the next day when he managed to get hold of him, he gave him the sad story, and he said all the money, everything was lost, I was coming to pay you, your profits, what's your capital, but uh, it's all gone now, ma. So both are Muslim brothers. So we'll call the one the investor. So the investor decided that, okay, I'll come and visit you. So he went to his house that weekend, but he went with some of his friends just to verify that this person is genuine, that the, the story was too good to be true. So when he got to his house, then he forcefully entered, and as he entered, then... Uh, he found that uh, the vehicle that was hijacked, the parent hijacked vehicle was still in his garage. So truth became apparent, that person said, okay, my mistake, uh, I owe you the money. So he wrote out some checks. These people said, we want a surety. So he had a expensive car that was in his garage as well. He gave that as a surety. When he gave that as a surety, they took the car, they took the checks. He said, as soon as I pay you all the checks, your money, you can give me the car back. So second con. While he was negotiating with these people, that person left the investor. He made a deal with him, I'll pay you or if you get the car back from me. Means the investor's friends, this person bribed them to get the car back, which they did try, but they failed because they were getting money from both sides. So you have to be careful because your own people will sell you out. The third con was then he went to the police station and reported it stolen. So he gave the checks, he said it's a surety, but now he reported the car stolen and he wanted to claim from the insurance company, but obviously it would be an investigation and more details. So we already on three cons in one story. Then after that, when uh, he managed to get hold of this person again, he said, I've got your checks. He said, I'm not going to pay you anymore. I need my car back first before I pay you. Anyway, long story short, after that this person came and uh, he never ever committed to any money. So that car, this investor left it by some of his friends. We had a panel beater shop. So they kept it there in safety until this person would pay. Now the investor gets a call from his panel beater people that the police have come, it was a stolen car, they've taken it and it's gone, it's confiscated. 
So you are shocked, how did the police find out, how did they know, etc. But he left the story. But he was suspicious. Afterwards, he got a uh, private investigator to investigate and trace the car, because they had the VIN numbers. And they found out that his panel beat a friend, sold the car to somebody else. How they did it, Allah knows best. But they sold the car to somebody else and they made money out of it. So we're down five or six corn scams in one story. Then these uh, investigators went to them and he said, we know the car, we're going to confiscate it. This is the location, this is where it's been traced. You will sold it. So then the investigators phoned the investor to say, you know what, the car can't be tracked. There's no way we can find it. In the meanwhile, one day out of the blue, they phoned this investor and said, you know what, we got a small problem. Uh, there's a accident that happened and we needed to be paid out for a vehicle. So somebody is going to pay us out, but you don't want to show it on the system. So can they put the check on your name? So he said, no problem, I'll help people out. So they went with him to the bank, the check was cashed and they took the money. Later on, only to find out that those investigators got paid out the money which the panel beater people took. They made up the entire story to con him so that they could take all the money. So a con, in a con, in a con, in a con. Dunya is like that. So we'll say if the Bishara investor, he didn't get anything. But if you trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this person from where he was at that time and now probably 20, 30 times Allah has paid him back. So dunya is like that. Man asbaha wa dunya akbar hammi. Whoever has his greatest concern for dunya, then four azabs will be sent on him. ألزم الله قلبه أربع خصال وأن هم من لا ينقطع منه أبدا ولف غريف غري ستريس إنزايتي إتل نيفر إنت وشغل لا يتفرغ منه أبدا and he will be busy all the time he will be engaged that he will never find free time ever in his life. so let me explain تم اختیاری قربانی تے دو اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی اب سے غیر اختیاری قربانی نہیں لے گا if you give voluntary sacrifice Allah will not take involuntary sacrifice but if you voluntarily don't sacrifice your wealth and sacrifice your life and your assets in the right avenues for the right reasons then you'll be using it Allah will take that sacrifice and it won't be for the right reasons it'll be for the opposite reasons so we need to free ourselves for Allah. Allah will give us barakat in our deen and in our dunya. And if we don't free ourselves for Allah, we won't have barakat in our dunya, nor we will have barakat in our deen. Jamaat went to one person, made his tashkil for four months, and I'm very busy, I got no time, I cannot manage it. Yet he had the opportunity, it just so happened, Taqadir, he met up in an accident. After four months, the Jamaat came back, he was still in hospital. They came to meet him in hospital. So if he had to give a voluntary korbani, it would have been in the right path. Now he spent his four months in the hospital. And he will see poverty, he will see, it will seem like he's got no wealth. No matter how much wealth he has, he will always see poverty. And he will be tired all the time, tired. And that tiredness will know no limit. Ajib Ibad Rahmatullah gives the example of feeding a hen. Either you put it in a bowl, means it won't tire itself, or you sprinkle it, it will tire itself the whole day. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts a barakat in a person's life when he does everything properly. There was one person we know personally as well. He's marhum now, but he had developed some medical treatments to cure people, and he was quite successful. So scientifically, medically, there was no cures for it, but he used to treat it. There was an international seminar, 
and him and his Japanese friend went to that sen seminar to offer their treaties. And uh, when the seminar started and they did the first presentation, the next day they both became very sick, they had to be hospitalized. Before the seminar ended, the Japanese doctor passed away. This person here was ill. It took him approximately over a year to recover from that illness. And his whole life also, it, the toxin and the poison haunted him. And uh, he stopped the treatment. After that, he stopped the treatment completely. And uh, he was of the opinion that wherever your bed is, you should always check like people who check for poles. There shouldn't be a river under your bed. As that magnetic pull causes a lot of sicknesses. He also believed that we should sleep with a copper plate under our bed because there are a lot of uh, rare metals from the earth which has been extracted and that's increasing the radiation of the earth. So people are getting more sick. So you should suggest a copper plate under the bed. And he was totally against microwaves. He said never ever use a microwave in your life. He also used to highlight the importance of fasting on Mondays and Thursdays and 13th, 14th and 15th of the lunar calendar. You say like how oh, there's high tides, low tides, your body needs to reorientate and the chemical imbalance that a person has in their body, the reorientation takes place with the moon pull. And Mondays and Thursdays, twice a week, your body reorientates. So he said the secret key to health is fasting Mondays and Thursdays and these three days of the month. He also used to uh, advise breathing in and holding your breath and then releasing it. So he said that for a while I used to think about it and one day I made ziyarat of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam and Nabi alayhi salam said that uh, tell the ummah to breathe in then for one finger then out then two fingers then out then three fingers like just ten fingers every day they should use do this as well. So he was out there to benefit mankind, man, benefit humanity. But he almost lost his life and many people have lost their lives. So the dunya is such that you never know what, when, how. We need to follow the instructions of Allah and His Rasul and make that our priority and objective. Otherwise, we can get caught in the strap. One lady was overweight, so she went to the doctor for a diet. So he gave her instructions, eat regularly two days, then skip a day. Repeat this process for two weeks. Then after two weeks, you can come see me. I am hopeful that you lose at least five cages. But after two weeks, she lost 20 cages. So when the doctor seen her and weighed her, then... Uh, the doctor was shocked. How did you manage to lose 20 kilos? I thought so you lose 5 kilos. So the lady said, actually on the third day, I thought so I'll drop dead. The doctor said, from the hunger that you mean. Because the doctor said, eat regularly two days, then skip a day. So from the hunger. So she said, no, from the skipping. From the skipping. So sometimes if we must interpret information, it can be detrimental. Person can lose their life also. What if we must interpret Quran in Hadith? What did we get it wrong about Akhirat? Abadar radiallahu anhu that taliduna lil maut that you are being born to die. Your birth is death. And whatever you build in is something that's going to become desolate and the structures will one day terminate. And you're giving preference to those things which will one day come to an end. And you're leaving your efforts for those things which will remain eternally. Akhirat will remain eternally. But you are not giving preference in that direction. Dunya, how it seems, that's not the reality. 
when Azun was on the bathroom scale holding his stomach in and the wife seen him and she started laughing she said uh, you you think so you're going to try to make the scale lighter by pulling your tummy in I don't think so that will work it's not going to help you so husband said I'm not trying to make myself lighter I can't read the scale I can't read the scale I need to push my stomach in so when a person listens to Quran and Hadith also a sickness is we think so that's what's the criteria for other people this person is suitable this person is suitable that's what's for them we don't put it in ourselves there was a divorce court judge and he told the husband that I have reviewed this case very carefully and after listening to all the evidence I have decided to give your wife $800 weekly I have decided to give your wife $800 weekly so the husband said judge that's very fair on your part and very nice of you your honor very nice of you don't worry every now and then I will also give here and there some dollars every now and then I will also give some dollars the judge was speaking to him telling him you're gonna pay but what he understood الدنيا موقفة بين السماء والأرض منذ خلقها الله الدنيا is suspended between the earth and the sky since the time Allah created it لا ينظر إليها وتقول يوم القيامة Allah subhanahu wa does not look at this dunya with mercy and on the day of qiyama dunya will say ya rabbi ju'alni li adna awliya'ik naseeban oh Allah make me a share from the friends of Allah ya Allah make me part of the people that are close to you. Allah will say, Uskuti ya la shay. Oh, the one that is worth less value, less. Keep silent. Inni lam arwaki lahum fi dunya. I was not happy for you to have a share part of their life in dunya. How I will give you a share of them now in akhirat. Adunya dar liman la dar lahu. That what's what's my object of, of life? What's my ultimate focus? We shouldn't get confused and disorientated with dunya. One lady went to an attorney, a divorce attorney, to ask for a divorce. So he asked her, "What grounds do you have?" She said, "Plus minus around six acres." What grounds do you have? Plus minus six acres. He said, "No, no, 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 no. I don't think you understand my question." Let me rephrase it. Do you have a grudge? No, just parking space outside. We use it now as a storeroom. And that was my idea from the beginning, but my husband never ever listened to me. Eventually he had to listen to me. So he said, no, 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 no. I actually mean, I'm trying to say, okay, let me rephrase it again. Does your husband beat you up? I'm looking for a reason. Does your husband beat you up? So she said, no, I always get up an hour before him. Does your husband beat you up? No, I always get up before him. He saw he's losing the battle, the lawyer. So he said, ma'am, are you sure you want the divorce? So she said, I am not the one who wants the divorce. My husband is the one who wants the divorce. He claims he has a communication problem with me but we never on the same page we never on the same page it should not be also when we pass away we find out in akhirat that we're not on the same page with Allah and His Rasul we should try to make it a habit of reading Surah Ikhlas Nabi Alayhi Salaam said Kul uwallahu ahad ta'adilu thulu fal Qur'an one third of the Qur'an Surah Ikhlas من قرأ كل الله أحد أشر مرات بن الله له قصة في الجنة الله والبلا بالس for this person in Jannah Umar and certain people do a lot he said Allah has got more to give you read it excessively may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the of reading Quran understanding the value of the short life in akhirat wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin